Hi, my name is Norman, and here is where I keep my filament. All right, you may already have noticed I have a new camera. Especially at the beginning of the video, I was still trying to figure out the correct exposure and autofocus settings. So I hope you don't mind that we start the voiceover a little earlier so that we can fast forward the wonky bits and get straight to business. So the main takeaway was that I was keeping all these almost empty spools and they weren't enough to confidently start a new print, but also they were a little too much to just throw them away. So these spools were sitting in my cupboard for a while and then I found something on AliExpress. And this is gonna be the main topic for today's video. So I'm talking about the Wise Pro 3D printer filament connector. <laughs> According to the packaging, it's easy to use, supports rapid heating, comes with intelligent protection, um, strong compatibility and a strong practicability. So here's a little spoiler. We made this one up. It's a made up tale. It's a total fabrication. But you gotta give them credits where it's deserved. It comes securely packaged inside the foam cutouts and inside the box is basically everything you need to get started. Even though I'm usually the guy to just wing it, this time I decided to use the manual instead. So on one side are the details, how to set it up. And on the back side, you're going to find the times you need to heat the thing in order to weld the filament. So PDG is for us. According to the manual, the first step is, well, taking one of these non-stick papers and wrapping them around your filament. And then you're supposed to use these paper clips to secure it. And because we all know from the packaging that it's easy to use, obviously the next step is simply taking the clamp and putting it around the filament. It has a quite strong grip, to be honest. And then we can plug in the power supply. And uh, yeah, I don't really like the fit here. So uh, what I did is I added a piece of tape so that the plug stays where it should be. And then comes the easiest step of the easy steps, it's firing it up. Um, looking at the manual, it needs about 90 seconds until you need to turn it off again and then you need to give it another 5 minutes to let it cool down completely. So, um, be right back. So, let's see what we got. Yeah, easy to use, right? <laughs> so I think the main problem is that the filament wants to go where it wants to go. You know, it, it's a little stiff. So I designed something which may help us with actually holding the filament properly in place so that the welding clamp can properly do its thing. Yeah, I know these two little screws on the sides were a little optimistic, so I added a lot of hot glue <laughs> and that thing is going nowhere now. Shall we give it a shot? I didn't show it before but I also trimmed the ends of the filament but what I didn't do in the first run was actually also filing it off so that it's perfectly flat at the ends. And now I can just push it into my fixture and I don't need to rely on those tiny paper clips anymore to hold everything in place. To save a little bit on that paper, I made two pieces out of it. And then I realized that it's really hard to get the paper in there with just one hand because, uh, you know, uh, you need the other hand to open up the clamp. But of course, this clamp is easy to use if you have another clamp to keep the first clamp open. <laughs> okay, may I correct myself? It's easy to use-ish. So now let's get that paper in there. While releasing the clamp again, I'm making sure that everything is aligned. Because honestly, the clamp has a little bit more wiggle room than it should have. 
And then I really push the filament into the middle again, just to make double sure that, you know, it's touching. I'm trying to get a perfect butt joint here. Round two, here we go. So almost 90 seconds in and I was checking the, the weld and it didn't really feel very solid. So I decided to let it run a little longer, but not too long, of course. So let's see again. Come to talk with you again. Yeah, still no luck. So I think this time the error was on my side because, well, number one, the fixture was kind of wrong. So that's why you see the new black printed parts. Uh, they are here to fix that. And the second one was that I think that the joint in the middle just didn't get enough time. So that makes me remember again why I usually skip the manual. However, third time's the charm. I'm gonna let this run in almost real time so that you get a feel how long it takes to set this up and also, of course, how, how my fixture works. So these four little screws are responsible for tightening the top jaw of the side clamps. And, you know, I loosened them so that I can push in the filament. By the way, the ends of the filament are just cut with a wire cutter at 90 degrees and then sanded flat. I pushed in the filament just far enough to be held in place by the clamp for now. Well, by now you should have figured out that uh, it's basically rinse and repeat for the other side. The only thing, the only difference is that the white side doesn't really want to go in there. You can see it's it's fighting a little bit more. Um, that's because, uh, see, it just retracted a little bit. That's because it's almost empty, so the radius of the spooling is a lot smaller. With both sides in place, it's time to put in the paper and it's a lot easier because they're not completely in. So that I can just, you know, you can see it slide in the paper. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you get it, I think. If I would reprint this fixture, I would probably add a little bit more space between the side jaws and the middle clamp because uh, then I could have just grabbed it with my finger and that makes installation a little bit easier. However, once the filament is held in place, it's time to just screw it down so that it doesn't move on its own anymore. And yeah, you notice it doesn't really work that way. Yeah, there's another thing I would change. Uh, the channel for the filament to go is a little bit too loose. So even though when the screws are tightened, it can actually slip out. Yeah. <laughs> I hope you don't mind that we fast forward to the point where we just were, because then you don't need to watch me struggle with the filament here. So all the screws tightened, nothing happened, yada, yada, yada. Now it's time to check if both ends of the filament are actually exactly in the heating zone. So I mentioned earlier that this clamp actually has a very tight grip. Um, so you see me in a second um, releasing it just a little bit to be able to move things inside the clamp. See here. So I'm, I'm tensioning the paper now around the filaments. So without hiccups, the entire setup takes two and a half, maybe three minutes. So I think that's actually pretty, pretty okay. Time is running. Let's come back in a few minutes. This time I let it cook for, I think, uh, more than three minutes. It was about four minutes and then I just turned it off and came the next morning. So that much cooling time is definitely not necessary, but you know, here we are. This one looks very, very promising. Now have a look at that. That's a really, really nice weld. All it needs is just a little cleanup with the hobby knife. The weld is very nice, but the diameter seems a little off because, well, it's definitely not 1.75 millimeters. Um, so will it print? Well, there's only one way to find out. Unfortunately, I missed the moment where the color changed, but you can tell already it's working, so that's good enough for me. And although this seems like a weird thing to print, 
uh, I, I actually need this for a future project. So this is not going to waste, actually. Here is another quick tip from the Shortcut Ninja. Um, <laughs> still need to get used to that. Uh, although butt joints work really, really well, I found that cutting the filament at a 45 works even better. But the thing which helped the very most was actually pushing the ends of the filament together while it was hot. The result which you want to get is this really beautiful and tasty looking squeeze out at the end. That way you know that both ends were molten and under pressure. So perfect conditions for a nice weld. And well, there you have it. Splicing tool and a spliced spool. Uh, yeah, you can tell the spooling is questionable at best. <laughs> so I'm not, I'm not sure yet if I can print this spool tangle free, but honestly, uh, back in the early days of 3D printing, uh, the cheaper spools, they were all wound like this. And for some reason they all worked. I never had a spool tangle up except once where I messed things up. It was my fault, not the spool's fault. So I think it's gonna print fine. So let's address the elephant in the room. Do you need one of those? Honestly, I... no. <laughs> I'm not sure, you know, this one was like 50 bucks on sale. So those things aren't very cheap. Financially speaking, you're not gonna save that much because you're always gonna need to spend time and electricity to actually weld those guys together. You will have to do this a long, long time until you get to a net zero. However, in terms of sustainability, I think, yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. Because I, I personally, I don't like throwing away things which are kind of good. Uh, the remaining filament on the spool is kind of good and that's why I've been keeping those for such a long time. And now being able to actually weld them together and still use it and not throwing things away is, to me personally, I think it's worth it. It's worth the extra work doing it. So you decide whether you want to have one of those or not. But if you do buy one of those, you definitely need to print something like that because it's, it's unusable without having like clamps which hold everything in line because the filament wants to go everywhere except into the clamp. Just keep that in mind before you even start trying to print one of those. <laughs> anyway, that being said, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something new today and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.